that's Ed, middle of the road bud here. Today I'm looking at the often most overlooked yet most important part of your running shoe arsenal, the daily shoe, the do-it-all Swiss Army footwear for the pavement punishment. I have for you my top five daily offerings I've had the pleasure of testing out over the last year. Five bangers to get you through your training block, maybe even to work or back and around the pool table safely. Thanks for tuning in people, it is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and help us get to a million subscribers. Also give this video a thumbs up like, that really does help out a huge amount. Danke schön. Today my top five daily shoes for 2023 so far. I'm gonna get straight into it people. I got some real good ones for you. First up, my footwear friends, is the Saucony Triumph 21. Now there was a time gone by when this shoe would probably be regarded as a max cushioned monster or a midsole mammoth. But by the standards of 2023, it's absolutely an acceptable daily option right now. So a 10 mil drop here from heel to toe, 37 millimeters of cushion in the sample size. That makes for a very versatile yet pacey daily model. I have to say I love the fantastic upper on the Triumph 21, really breathable, very light. There's very little of the past models DNA left here in the Triumph 21, aside perhaps from the large amount of cushion that you've got. I found that this one works out really well for some daily miles, maybe some recoveries too, and you could run some faster reps in it too, so I think it covers all the daily sort of units you could want. I think this one looks the part without being overtly plush and overblown in the upper department. Less padding here and more of a comfortable lockdown over the top of the foot and it's breathable to boot. That Power Run Plus midsole foam is light and it's airy and there's some really great bounce. It's a very forgiving sort of underfoot feel here, especially when you couple it with an insole made of the same Power Run Plus. It's proved to be pretty durable as well when using it for a variety of different types of run. It's easy to clean up with a spot of the old rejuvenator despite having that flat knit white upper here all in all when you've got discounted pairs of this one floating around for about 145 right now that's uh, earth credits by the way british pounds it represents one of the best values or daily shoes in the arsenal at the moment well done Saucony. you've hit a home run on this one Next shoe up for me for those sort of daily pace miles, around about eight minutes a mile. It's about five minutes per kilometer. But it's also been awesome for musical performances where I've been stood up for like two and a half hours or something, not including setup time and teardown time. It's got to be the Pegasus 40 from Nike. I really like the React foam that they've used, that formula in the last couple of iterations of this shoe. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more cushioned underfoot, not quite so firm as some of the others that we've seen like back in like the 37 or the 38. I really like the two air units they've included in this model of the shoe and the heel and the forefoot. I've had loads of Pegasus models over the years. I think the very first model I had was back in 1992. Really loved that shoe. I used to clean it after every wear. I think it just has something a little extra in the mix that some of the other shoes that are just foam based don't have. When you consider that the stack here in the Pegasus 40 is about seven millimeters less in the heel and in the forefoot than that Saucony Triumph 21, it perhaps makes the Pegasus feel a little bit more like a traditional sort of running shoe in comparison to a lot of the modern takes that we've got in today's list. A slightly thicker upper here and a vastly more aggressive outsole than the Saucony. It's certainly up there in terms of my do-it-all reasonably well shoe list. The price is also in line with what people can afford nowadays as well, bearing in mind the current economic climate. 115 Earth credits, British pounds, being emptied from your wallet is a lot more easy to stomach, I suppose. Though one word of advice, if you're gonna wear this shoe in much colder climates, maybe if you live in the Arctic or something, down into the sort of single digits, the React foam does seem to get a little bit firm. I'm not sure what happens there, whether it's something to do with the way they create it or something, but it really doesn't like the cold weather. So be warned if you're a winter warrior. Now, I'm inclined to include the A6 Super Blast here, Though I'm very aware of the price here, 195 quid is nothing to be sneezed at. It's going to put people off from picking up this shoe and trying it out. But those that do try it find a really forgiving shoe underfoot. Lots of consistent cushion across that footbed from the two different foams. And it's a top-notch thin but very fitting upper. 
super breathable as well i really love the lockdown in this one it's light enough for sort of some easy daily runs or even some recovery efforts but you've got enough cushion there for some longer runs too so when you add it all up if you need a shoe that can do it all aside from perhaps very slippery snake-like surfaces or perhaps muddy debris laden paths as well this does the jobs that you perhaps need two or three other shoes to do as such i think i've actually taught myself into putting into today's video there we go as I said, one area they can improve on the Super Blast is in the outsole. That's its Achilles heel. I get a lot of debris sort of caught up here in the sort of cutout sections. And ASICs, we need more texture to the rubber here. It just does feel a little bit slippery, certainly on toe off when it's a bit wet. That's probably waiting for us in the Super Blast too. Closing in on 100 miles on this one, so I'll soon have my update for you. The fourth piece of footwear in this daily sneaker shakedown is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Now, I've included this one in terms of recommendations I've received from my viewers. They're the people that make this channel happen. Well, that aside in a very fat black cat. There's a lot of people that still love this model, even with the enhanced stability that they've included from that winged nylon plate. And there it is, right there. The midsole really is soft as a kitten very light very propulsive too and an excellent daily use shoe that does most things pretty well without a load of excessive weight and bulkier midsole materials there's no plush uppers here really it's quite a simple shoe when you actually break it down which i'm not going to do i always get a bit upset when people cut shoes up Although I have done that myself from time to time. I mean, I've never cut up a shoe that's completely brand new or anything. That kind of upsets me. At least I've put miles into all the shoes I've chopped up. I've got something out of them at least. I found the upper to be nice and durable, very fitting. And that plate does provide a bit of pop along with that power run PB material. You've only got 36 millimeters of heel stack here. So almost the same there as the Triumph 21, but a slightly more refined drop of only eight millimeters. So perhaps not quite as aggressive as the Triumph. Just makes for a shoe that can handle all the daily work for you and maybe even some pace work as well. You could race in it too. What more do you want? I found the midsole actually to be pretty durable as any of the shoes in the Endorphin range. Though again, the outsole isn't quite as usable as the Triumph. I don't think the rubber's quite as good here. Seems to sit more flush with the exposed midsole. More than the Triumph anyway. Though 115 smackaroonies, it's hard not to pick up one of these and add it to the rotation sport shoes have got loads of pairs of them at the moment around that price range so go and take a look the speed 3 represents some smashing value from soccer knee just like a fun shoe to run in and i think all running shoes should be fun if you've got one in your collection that's not very fun to run in then you know what to do with it last shoe on my daily dawdle is the boston 12 from adidas quite new this one fresh from the adidas footwear foundry now i'm not including the adi zero sl that's probably one of the worst shoes that i've tried out over the last year it was terrible really just felt like a piece of balsa wood with a really cheap upper on top. Not good. The Boston 12, though, is absolutely fantastic from the upper right down to the outsole. Now, this shoe has a 38mm heel stack. There's no getting away from that, and I can't believe I'm recommending it as a daily shoe, but I am. I mean, I've included the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 here and the Triumph 21 as well, so why not the Boston? A softer underfoot feel here from the extended amount of Light Strike Pro plus the new Light Strike 2.0. I found this version of the shoe to be much more cushioned, a lot more palatable for those sort of easier miles. Felt nice and comfortable like you're sat having a warm glass of mulled wine on Christmas Eve. I found this shoe is discounted quite often on non sort of official retailers. Head over to like Wiggle or Sports Shoes. You can normally pick it up for about 120 smackaroonies here in the UK, which is a darn good price. Makes for a banging beast with some vital versatility to add to the shoe selection. It's all about the 2.0 here. You got Energy Rods 2.0, Light Strike 2.0. It's a W all the way. Just makes it way more usable than past models of the Boston. Well, at least the last two or three anyway. They were clog-like. This one really does pick up the pace nicely. Shorter efforts, longer runs. It's all under the umbrella of the Boston 12. Plus, it looks darn good for some town excursions and some pool table action. So that's my five daily shoes for you, people. Let me know your alternatives down in the comments.
it's musical interlude time for you. Now it's a brand new track out from Mac DeMarco. I think it also features an uh, artist called Ryan Paris. The track's called Simply Paradise. I'm going to listen to the track right now. I haven't listened to it before and then give you my instant sort of reactions, what I make of the tune. Here we go. So about halfway through the track, Mac DeMarco's vocals sound amazing. I think he's like given up smoking and like drinking and everything. He's like sort of really uh, cleansed himself. His voice sounds incredible, like crystal clear, really beautiful delivery. It's a very funky kind of soul-like number, this one. Real sort of R&B track. There's some Prince vibes definitely in there, but really enjoying it so far. Okay, it's a bit clearer now what's going on here. I realise who the other vocalist is on this track. Ryan Paris is actually the stage name for someone you may know did the song Dolce Vita. You can really hear the chap's accent coming through a bit later on in the track. Really, really wonderful. Go and check this one out, people, from Mac DeMarco and Ryan Paris. Simply Paradise. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.